Another of the first batch of questions asked to you in any Greenford exam question will be to add movement to the user controlled character. In this example here we can see that they're asking for the arrow keys to move your character but of course they could be asking you to use WASD or any combination of keys. Don't be on autopilot with this, make sure you are 100% clear on what keys should be controlling your character. This involves us writing some code for the character itself, so double click on that to bring up the code editor. Our pirate character is getting this treatment and once again, that's all going on inside the act method, which is the code that runs each and every frame of the game. We'll start by identifying the directions the character needs to move, up, down, left and right. But this time, instead of generating a number at random, we need to react to the press of a button. So. If we press the up arrow, we want the character to move up. Now this is called event-based programming, and the code we need to access the event is this beautiful piece of Java. It's part of the Greenfoot library, and the method is called isKeyDown. Nice and obvious once again. Now, just to clarify, isKeyDown doesn't mean is the down arrow pressed. What it means is, is a particular key pressed down on the keyboard. It's this. We need to tell it which key to look at in the argument to the function. Amazingly, the up arrow is just called up, and we're putting it in double quotes because the argument is the text description of the key. We're going to use that entire chunk of code as the argument to an if statement. This looks complicated, but it's just an if statement to tell it what to do if the up key is currently pressed. So, what do we want it to do? Let's take a leaf from the way in which we set the characters to move at random in the earlier video. There are two steps, rotate the character to point in the correct direction and then move it in that direction. Let's start by placing our compass filled with the bearings over the image. Remember, what we need to do here is to point the zero degree marker in the direction that the character is facing. Now, as our character is not really facing anywhere, we'll just leave it where it is and assume that she'll be stood like this if she's moving upwards. This gives us zero degrees as the argument to that wonderful set rotation function we've used before. So let's get that typed in. We then need to go through the steps with the set location function, just like before, finding its current location in the game world using the get x and get y functions, and then working out the offset. To move up, just like in this example, we'll need to decrease the value in the y axis. Uh, this is because computers count image grids from the top left square, increasing their x and y positions as they move down and to the right. So. That code now needs to go into our if statement. There we go. Now, we'll use that magic copy and paste function to duplicate that entire if statement, and we just need to make a few changes. Which direction are we moving in this time? Let's work logically through the directions in our compass in a clockwise direction, so the next one would be right. Guess what this key is called? You've got it, right. So, let's update that code. There we go. What about that angle? Back to our rotation diagram and right is 90 degrees. So let's get that stuck into the set rotation code. Cracking. On to the set location code. We can get the current X and Y position as we have before. And the offset needed to move right is plus one in the X axis. With that added to the code, we've got a chunk to move our pirate to the right. Let's copy and paste that chunk again and looking at the down direction this time, we're going to be changing the name of the key to down. Yeah, not a lot to remember here, it's all quite self-explanatory. Let's update that code. Fantastic. Now onto the rotation. Looking at our compass diagram, we've got to set the rotation at 180 degrees to get our pirate to point down. That done, we can move on to set location. Once again, grabbing the current location using get X and get Y, we can examine the offset needed. Our high quality animation shows our pirate captain moving one cell down and increasing her y-axis value. 
With that included in the function, we can update the code appropriately. Well, hey, just one more to go. So let's get that pasted again. And the only direction we're missing is left. So let's do that. Change the code so that it refers to the left key. Yep, there we are. How about the rotation? Well, our diagram says 270 degrees for left. So let's type that in. Great. Lastly, let's set that location. Yes, we can pull in the current location with get X and get Y. And let's watch this beautiful cinematic, almost Pixar level animation, which shows us that moving to the left is decreasing the X axis. Add in that minus one offset on the left hand side and get that typed and boom, we're done. This is our character and it should move according to the button presses. So let's check. Click the compile button and the compiler will turn this high level code into intermediate code so that the Java virtual machine will run it as a game. Phew, no problems there. Now, let's play it to see if it works. Click run and then tap away at your arrows. Up, yes, that works. Let's try left next and yes, there she goes over to the left. How about down? Sure enough, she travels downwards and finally right. Yes, she's moving the right way. So at this point, some of you might be sneering at me a little bit with the quality of my code. Let's head back for a moment because I want to make a big point of this. For all of you lot rolling your eyes and thinking, what does that ball dude know about Java? He's not using else ifs. Standalone if statements are the work of the devil. Well, I'm here to tell you that if I had used else ifs, then the control of your character would be much worse. If you remember, the way else ifs work is that they link together the logic so that any if statement condition, when it's matched, it will stop comparing the rest of the else ifs. Once it's run the code in the curly braces for the condition it matched, it will skip past the other else ifs and the else all the way to the next chunk of code. And this makes it more efficient. The only problem with that is that if I'd done that and pressed two directional arrows at the same time, it wouldn't move down and right, it would have just moved right. By constructing the code in this way, it allows us to press two buttons at the same time and have both conditions matched to make it look like we've even got the angles programmed in. Watch the way the conditions are matched when we press both down and right. We expect the pirate to move like this. The reason this works in our code is because it first matches the condition of a right press and because we've used what look like naive separate if statements, it can also match the down key presses, meaning it moves right one and down one in the same frame. So we've got that done. The only thing they can do that's really any different is that they could ask you to control your character using different keys. and. To get around that, you just type in the letter of any other key in the argument to the first function. That's all there is to it. Now, our next step is a lot more involved and really helps you understand how this object oriented programming methodology works and how it works nicely to allow objects to interact because that's what we're doing here, trying to deal with collision detection for our actors.